to honor our practitioner that will be holding the light for us today during service, practitioner David Kennedy.
We always have a practitioner that's on high watch during service. It sits in the prayer center there in the back. And, uh, today it's David. We invite you uh, to come after service and receive prayer from any of our practitioners. We are here to serve you. And uh, you can put a prayer request, a written one, in the prayer chest by David. You can go to, over there to get a prayer. You can go to the chapel on the side to receive a prayer. Just look for any of the practitioners with the green shawls, and they are here for you. Well, it's sliding into the end of the summer. Today we're going to be talking about playfulness and playing, and I hope you've all been taking this time this summer to play. Good, good. And uh, it's time for the kids to go back to school and buy them the new tennis shoes and the backpacks and all that. I know some of them are already back. But we have a few things happening before that. We have, um, next Sunday, we have a wonderful guest who's coming to speak. So I invite you to come to service next Sunday at both services. Dr. Ken Gordon will be here. Dr. Gordon is the spiritual leader of our entire movement. He's the spiritual leader for the uh, religious science uh, movement and Centers for Spiritual Living. And he will be sharing a message with us next Sunday. So please come out and, and be part of that. Dr. Christian is on a wonderful, playful time with his family on vacation. So Dr. Ken will be filling in and, and speaking here next week. Also, fall is a big time for us. It's a time for classes. So we're gearing up for our fall catalog. Look for it. It will be coming out soon. Our education table is in the family room. Please visit it and see what's going on. But before the fall schedule comes out, we have an event here that I just want to tell you about. It's August 30th, Friday evening. It's relaxing with Rumi. It's a night of music and meditation. Uh, Rumi and Marcy and English. There'll be Persian food available. It's only a $15 uh, donation to come in, and the food is a $10 extra if you would like to eat. But all of that money goes to an orphanage in Nepal. So come and support that and support the orphanage as well. The big thing that's going on around here at Seaside that all of you, I'm sure, heard about, it's our 25th anniversary. This is our 25th year of being Seaside Center for Spiritual Living, and we have a gala. We have a gala coming up uh, the first uh, Saturday in October, and there are still some tickets left. Uh, and you can purchase them at the Silver Circle table in the family room. See many of the wonderful women over there. And get your ticket for the gala. There'll be a silent auction. There'll be a live auction. There's music and dancing and all of that. Also, there's opportunities for um, placing an ad in the program if you'd like to do that. There's full page, half page, quarter page. Please see Trudy in the family room after service if you're interested. And they're also looking for people that might have wonderful things to donate to our silent auction or to our live auction. So if you have an idea for something that you might have, that would be wonderful for the auction. Again, please see the ladies at the Silver Circle table. There's opportunities to play here at Seaside. There's opportunities to be part of our community. And I just want to briefly mention a couple of those. We have opportunities in our Usher and Reader Ministry. Please see Keith Russell if you're interested in playing in that way, being here on Sunday and meeting people and getting to know everybody. We have a few plots up in our garden. I don't know if you know that we have a garden up on our upper property, little garden areas where individual people have their own garden. So we have a couple plots that are available if you're interested in gardening. Monday evenings, we have an ongoing meditation here with Deep. It's a bowl meditation. I invite you to come and be part of that. That's going on for a few more Monday evenings. Wednesday evening, we have the revealing service with Reverend Sunshine Day. So if you come out to that on Wednesday evening, this Saturday is our men's breakfast, Saturday morning here. Also, last but not least, the bookstore has just been to the L.A. gift uh, show. It's got all kinds of new wonderful things in the bookstore. And they are having a 40% off sale on some of their shawls and scarves. So if you haven't been in our bookstore, there's some good goodies over there to check out. So in the sense of just that joy and happiness that summer brings and that sense of community, I just ask you to please stand and greet your neighbor. And please remain standing for our congregational song. <laughs>
invitational song this morning. And how beautiful it is to feel the unconditional love of spirit, recognizing that God is love. God is that universal life force that moves through and expresses as each and every one of us on this beautiful morning, knowing that God is that divine presence and that that God love goes with us wherever we are. For God is here in each and every moment in each and every situation, in the challenges and in the triumphs, God's presence is ever available to us as we open our hearts and feel the love and the joy and the playfulness of this beautiful expression of life as we come together as this amazing seaside community and on this wonderful day of celebration and feeling the love and feeling the joy as we connect to that God source that is within. 
and opening to the magnificent gifts of this service. Our wonderful guest star is Gia, who is here today to share with us her amazing voice and the music that continues to uplift each one of us and our own dear Reverend Catherine, who shares her inspired and playful message with us this morning too. And knowing that we take these beautiful blessings of this day with us as we move forward, feeling the love, feeling the joy, and in that wonderful celebration of life, knowing it is all good and it is all God in each and every moment. And so it is. Amen. God is real, God is magnificent, God is love, God is true. I just give thanks for you, for you are the individuals that have said yes to spirit, yes to your good. And so I just invite you to sit back and open your heart, your mind, and your soul as you feel that beautiful presence that is the truth of who and what you are. For God is real, God is truth, God is love, and it is who we are. So I'm so grateful that you're here sharing this day. I know that because of this, you will go forth and the rest of your day will shine brightly and you'll take that love and light out into life and, and just brighten life for everyone. So we're glad that you're here doing that. And if you're new to this teaching, I want to uh, let you know about two things. Number one, we have a class called the Basic Beliefs Class. It's the first Sunday of every month. It's held after second service in the, the Emerson Room. It's a, a time to come together to give you a whole packet as to this belief and how you can implement this teaching into your life. For Science of Mind is the application of the great wisdom and that the uh, philosophers and religions and scientists have taught. It's applying it to your life. So you can find out more about how you can use this in your life and have your life reflect the good that you are here to shine. So um, just invite you to be part of that. Um, also, if you're new, we have a welcome packet for you. It has all kinds of gifts in it. It has a Science of Mind magazine. It has a coupon for Reverend Christian's book. It has all kinds of nice little things in it, information. Pick that up at our welcome table. And um, and I'm just going to say it's echoing in here, Ed. <laughs> and enjoy all the gifts that we have for you. So we are blessed today, for we have Reverend Catherine Economo that's sharing a message. It's excellent. It's all about playfulness, something that we all need to remember. And we are following along all year long with Reverend Christian's book, The Joyce Living Journal. It's a journal that you can actually get daily, or you can pick up in the bookstore, and it's um, a reading that we can do every single day to remind us of the truth to set our day right. And today, our talk and our reading is entitled, Life is Your Playground. So I just invite you to take these words within. The truth. It starts with a quote from Richard Bach. It says, you are led through your lifetime by the inner learning, the playful spiritual being that is your real self. Don't turn away from possible because you're not certain and don't ha that it has anything to teach you. You're always free to change your mind and choose a different future or a different past. And so the reading is this. Life is your playground. The very nature of the universe is like Plato. 
Quantum science shows how the interaction of observation and intention literally shapes the physical reality. In the same way, your life is shaped by the hands of your attitude and beliefs. What this means is that nothing is permanently the way it is. Everything can be reshaped. You can take any part of your life and roll it back up into a ball and begin again. You can renew yourself with a positive attitude, expecting a good outcome for whatever you try. Like a game, you can change the rules or start over again. Just start playing. And so we'll just take these words within as we anchor them in prayer. Closing our eyes to the outside world and that creation that has already been made manifest and moving into that universal Play-Doh, if you will, where we are led by a power and a presence that is God. For there is one power, one presence, and that power and presence is good. And it is my life now and it is the life of each individual here. For there can be no separation. The activity of life that I live is the volition and is the power and presence of the infinite intelligence, the wisdom, the peace, the love, the joy that is God itself. For God is and I am. And so it's in this truth and knowingness that I know for each and every individual that something that is alive is present, is available to more good than we've ever experienced before. Every ounce of my being, every ounce of our being is available for the wisdom, for the guidance, for the new creative expression, for the life that is magnificent, beautiful, prosperous, whole, and healthy. And so it's with this and the availability of this and the awareness of this, the intention and the attention of this that I let go and let God. I am guided, guarded, and so I release this word with gratitude into the eternal yes and watch the beautiful manifestations of God at work. And so it is. Amen. Good morning. It is my great honor and pleasure to introduce a guest artist this morning. Um, she comes down from Los Angeles. She's been here before, but if you hadn't had a chance to hear her before, you're all, all in for a wonderful treat. Um, also, just want to mention that she does. She will have CDs for sale after the service, so feel free to visit her at the uh, one of the tables out, out here in the foyer. Um, please welcome Gia Chambodi. Good morning. see you through my eyes, then you would know not to criticize, cause what you are is powerful, with room to grow, mm, you're beautiful, ever in the eye of the beholder, ever in the eye. The beholder in the kitchen as you pour a cup, just your essence fills me up. This moment is what we are drinking in and ever in the eye of the beholder. Another day gives way to night in a starlit world we embrace. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to be alright. I feel touched by your grace ever in the eye of the beholder, ever in the eye of the beholder. Now standing in the doorway with a smile after a long day. Telling me 
how good it is just to be here ever in the eye of the beholder. If we could see tomorrow's sunrise now, there will still be all the love we Yeah, I said ever in the eye of the beholder, ever, ever in the eye of the beholder, ever in the eye of the beholder. If we could see tomorrow's sunrise now. Thank you. That is Gia Chamboti. She just gets us there, right there, right? Good morning, everyone. How fun it is to be here with you on this great, fun Sunday morning, the end of summer. Are you all having a great summer? How's it going? Everybody happy? <laughs> yeah, fabulous. Good. Great. So I'm, I want to thank you all for being here because I feel like this talk was actually for me. That I'm glad that this is, we'll call this a divine appointment, but the truth is that um, a, a number of things have come up over the last little bit that really had showed me that this was the talk that I needed to give, which means that this is a talk that I needed to hear. So I'm hoping there's something in it for you all, but we know, we, I really know that it's the divine speaking to me. So, so what happened was last week I was driving to church with my family, and we were so excited to come for, um, for the end of the um, music series, which is kind of wild. If you didn't see it, please watch it online because it's really worth it. It's really worth it. Um, and so um, I was chatting with my husband and he was talking and I already cleared this just so you guys all know. I, got, I cleared it to be able to tell the stories about my husband this week. Um, and he, to he was talking about his work. He was talking about what was going on during his day and he's got this sweet little shop in Fallbrook that people come in and out and come to visit him and, and you know I really wouldn't use the word complaining about the people who would come in, were coming in. Someone might say that he was complaining, but I wouldn't say that. Um, but so, so um, and in that, I said to him, as, as a good wife who's a minister would say, well, honey, you know, what happens between nine and five is the playground of your consciousness. And he said, he said, that's your next book. You need to write that down. Write that down. Write that down. You know, and I, and I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not going to write that down. But I did actually pull out my iPhone and write it down, and um, and uh, and uh, and said, no. But what, that's what happens. And so we came and we we were a little bit late. So we sat in the back, and all of a sudden I looked at the program, and there's my topic for this week: your life is your playground. And I said, honey, look, you know, this is what we're talking about. And then I didn't realize that um, we have we've just gone through the Gourmets for God process, and um, and uh, so months ago I signed up for Gourmets for God, and and was just picking intuitively what I didn't even look at my calendar. I just picked intuitively what what I, sounded fun to me, and um, and then I realized that it was last night, and it was the barbecue and games. And so I'm glad to see all of my friends from the Gourmets for God are here. I actually told them that they needed to come or else I could tell any story I wanted about them. <laughs> and as we know, what happens at a Gourmets for God stays at a Gourmets for God more or less, let's just say that. And so, so we had a really good time. So then, so then I knew, really knew that this whole idea of life as a playground was mine to study, it was mine to open to, it was mine to explore. And so I knew that this was a perfect divine time, not, not you know, not that anything ever is not. Let's just, let's just be honest about that. And so from the reading that Reverend Tammy did for us from Dr. Christian, you know, they, they're ta it was talking about how science really is beginning to prove that, uh, the, that our experience of our life is malleable. 
All right, this is something that theologians and metaphysicians and, and new thought people have known for hundreds of years, right? We've been reading this from all of, our, all of the people that we study, say that our thoughts, our belief, what I call our thought atmosphere, creates the experience of our life, okay? Can we come to some agreement about that, that we're starting from that idea? Okay, so now the scientists are catching up which is nice, it's nice of them to catch up, you know, and, and, um, and for me personally, I love studying the science of this, I don't feel like I need to because I have a pretty strong faith, but I think it's kind of interesting, so, so I study the quantum physics piece of this, and, and this is what they've come, and I'm not going to go into the deep double slit story, uh, double slit experiments and all of that, you can Wikipedia that if you want, but the, the whole concept is this, this is the foundation, that there's two things, one is that there's some stuff that is the foundation of everything that is, okay? So that's, and that's a technical scientific term, stuff. There's some stuff <laughs> that is the foundation of everything. So that some smaller than, is subatomic particles, okay? Something that's smaller than the smallest, smallest thing you could ever even imagine, okay? And, and last year they, they, found, they thought they found it, right? The Higgs boson, the God particle or whatever. And so that moves through everything that is, all right? That's the idea. And the second thing that the, that the um, quantum physics um, experiments are, are proving is that conscious awareness changes uh, the formation and the activity of what it's looking at, okay? So that's the, that's the second piece of it, so that consciousness and awareness changes stuff, okay? So there's stuff, and then our awareness of it changes it. Okay, so that's basically what you need to know about quantum physics, right? Okay, everybody clear about that? Good. Okay, so if we can start with that, then it just proves what we've been talking about. You know, if we multiply it out into our lives, you can see that what these new thought theologians have been talking about forever is that when we use our conscious awareness, when we connect with our presence, our creative force that is who we are, and we use it to focus in a certain direction, stuff changes. All right? So that's what we're playing with today. That's the idea. That's God's playground, by the way. I love that they used Plato in that, in that uh, reading because it's so clear an image, right? We've got something. You form something. I don't like it. Smash it. I'm going to change it. I'm going to do something else with it. I'm going to make something else. So we can think about our lives that way. We don't have to smash our lives. We can mold them gently. I can... Realize that's a better that's a better way of looking at it, but but so the idea is that we are spiritual beings. We are we think we're human. We think that this physical world is our reality. We think that this is you know what we are experiencing and what's happening and all of the the things that we look at and and have in our life are are the truth of who we are. It's the realness of our life. That's totally the false part of our life. We are spiritual beings. We exist beyond space and time. And our creation, our creativity, who we are, the force that we are, that is the divine made manifest, by the way, the infinite, powerful, divine made manifest is you. Just in case you were wondering, that's the truth of who you are. Okay, so, so because we are that, anything we put our attention on is created. Feel the power of that? Okay, so whenever we think that we're stuck in one certain thing, whenever we think we're stuck in a certain place, in a certain situation, with a certain condition, with a certain whatever, nothing, nothing is stuck. There is no limitation, there is no stuckness in any way possible in any area of your life. Everything can be changed, everything can be altered, everything can be recreated because we can use our conscious awareness. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? And so, so, instead of walking around focused on the minutia of our life, it's, this is my, my whole idea today is that we're going to move into the playground part of this. Because what's it like to be on the playground? It's fun. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. God, you are God's playground. The infinite thought, this joyous thought, and you were created. Not just to suffer. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not to be limited not to be stuck in the minutia of our day-to-day -day lives. You are here to express and experience joy and love. How cool is that? Are you in for that? I'm in for that, right? So often I have people come through my office and say, you know, I just, I would change my work, but oh, goodness, I, you know, what, what kind of fires am I going to have to put out tomorrow and what kind of problems am I going to have to deal with and what if this happens and I don't really want to deal with this anymore, you know? Well, 
you don't have to. What if we could change our relationship to the way that we're living our life? What if we could change the perception we have of what it is that we're doing? I have a great, um, I had a great experience last week. We had our, um, we had our family picnic after second service. Did anyone have a chance to get over there? It was so fun. It was so fun. And, um, and uh, so we were there for a little while after church, and um, I was with my five-year-old Emily, and we're kind of standing around, and all of a sudden I noticed her noticing that there was a hula hoop on the ground. And, and she just looked at it, and she looked at us, and then she kind of went like this. And she moved towards it and tried to see if anybody was looking at it, you know, and she kind of slid over towards the hula hoop, you know. Then she grabbed it, you know, <laughs> looking at me like I was, like, to give her permission. Is, I don't know whose hula hoop it is. Sure, you want to play hula hoop, have a hula hoop. And so she started to try and hoop. Oh, funny, funny. We were over by, on the side, and, and uh, she started to try and hoop a little, and it fell down. And, then, and she, said, here, Ma, here. she said, here, Daddy, you try. So Steve tried to hoop a little, and of course, we're a little embarrassed. We're in the corner of the, of the you know, whole church picnic there. I'm trying to learn how to hula hoop. And then here I am trying to hula hoop a little bit, and of course, it just immediately falls down. But Emily got the bug. She, she started to hoop, and... and could keep it up for like three rounds, okay? And then, and then it fell. And then we actually had to leave a little bit early. So I had to say, honey, you gotta leave it. We had another Gourmets for God, which was really fun. Um, the, the, if you're not participating in the Gourmets for God program, just wait till next year, because it is so fun. They're, they're, it's a wonderful opportunity to come together and meet people from the congregation. And so we went to this lovely Gourmets for God last uh, Sunday, and Emily came with us, and she was a five-year-old in an adult party. Um, Mama, when can I get a hula hoop? When are we going to buy a hula hoop? Mama, can I get a hula hoop? Daddy, what about a hula hoop? Can we get a hula hoop? And we're trying to, honey, it's okay, just color, you know, let's, and we're trying to mingle and talk. Mama, but Mama, no, really, when, I mean, tomorrow? Can we go tomorrow? Can we, when can we get this hula hoop? And I said, okay. And so Steve and I looked at each other, and then we looked at her, and we said, if you are quiet in color for the next 20 minutes, we will take you to Target and get you a hula hoop, you know? (laughs) Talk about parents of the year, okay? Parents of the year. (laughs) Bribery is number one. Okay. Okay. So she drew this beautiful picture and and so we went and we got her a hula hoop and um, when we got home that day she went out and back and hula hooped for two and a half hours straight I'm not kidding she did not stop she was so excited to have it and and you know she did three rounds it dropped she did three rounds it dropped she did three rounds it dropped all of a sudden she started hooping she could hoop for five minutes straight She could hoop so easily. She had her arms up like this. She was jumping up and down, and she could just pop her knee and have it going around her knee like this. I was like, oh, my God, you know? And it clicked for me. What if I have something new that I have to experience, and I can use that energy? What if I can can take a new task, I can take a piece of growth that I'm working on in my life, a challenge, whatever you call it, and I take that fun play and, 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 and learn from that? How about that? What, what's the difference in the quality of going to work with that attitude rather than what am I going to have to deal with today, right? And so I love what Ernest Holmes says. Ernest Holmes, the founder of religious science, says, I love bringing my shiny, big science of mind. It's so impressive, isn't it? <laughs> I love these words. He says, Spirit thinks or knows within itself And as a result of this interaction, creation manifests. Creation is the play of life upon itself through divine self-imagination. Spirit must create in order to be expressed. Spirit, life, soul, substance, law, and unity are all coexistent and co-eternal with each other. The only thing that changes is the form. Spirit makes things out of itself by becoming the thing it makes, and there is no effort in this process. That's the important part. There's no effort in the process. We don't have to work too hard about it. We don't have to try and figure it out. We don't have to work and, and, and effort to have this creative joy express as who we are. We just need to open to the fact that there is joy, that this does not have to be drudgery, that this does not have to be difficult, that there is this innate place within ourselves that is filled with love and with light, and it's just trying to be expressed. It's just trying to come out, and our job is to open to that truth. And so, um, so, uh, 
So th that took me on to st uh, looking into the idea of play. And now, as again, as a mother of a five-year-old who is about to start public school in a week, I have one more week of summer, and, and I keep reminding myself I'm not sending her to jail. It's kindergarten. It's not jail. It's kindergarten. She'll be fine, you know. I've done a lot of research about schools, and I've done a lot of research about play and the importance of play, and there's a whole lot out there. There's a whole lot of studies about, about the importance of play in children and what, and what happens when they fully engage. They develop their social skills. They develop their imagination. They, uh, they develop their creative faculties, right? And, and we almost know what happens if children are deprived of play and how, what, what, how that manifests in challenges later on. And so I was so excited to find a whole realm of study about the importance of play in adults. I found this amazing, I want to get his name right, Dr. Stuart Brown did a TED talk about his studies about the importance of play in adults. And I've got a new word for you. You want to learn a new word? My new word is neoteny. Does anybody know what that is? Just wait for all of my, oh, I got one. Okay, we'll see if I, if I describe it right. You can tell me later. Um, so uh, all my words with friends, people, watch out, because I'm so excited to have a, new, have a new word to play with, neoteny. What neoteny is, is it's a, it's a biological term, and it means the retention of adolescent or immature traits into adulthood. Okay, in species, right? Good, I got it right. Okay, so, so not only does that explain the people I dated in my 20s, <laughs> But what it means is, and, and there's a lot of different ramifications, humans are, are highly neotenous beings. We have the capability of being highly neotenous beings. Okay, let me get that right. So, um, so and there's some negative kind of ramifications of that. We're not going to go into it. But one of them is this, that we are actually biologically wired for play. We are biologically wired for play. And if we don't have that aspect of our life engaged, we are not fully expressing who we are, you know? And so, uh, isn't that cool? We learned something new today. I love that. We learned something new that we are, bi uh, biologically, we are, we are supposed to be playing in our life. We are supposed to be engaging in, in, these, creative, um, in these creative endeavors. And so, I get back to my gourmets for God. <laughs> and so, our game night. So what happened was, um, we had uh, a couple of games set up, and one of them was croquet. And so we were sitting there, and I said to my husband, honey, hey, it's been a long time, let's go play croquet. Let's get a couple people together, and we, we played croquet. So I'm going to leave the other two out um, for, to, prepare, to, um, to protect the innocent. And so, um, and so what we did was we started to play croquet, and, and uh, truth be told, it's been about five or six years since we played croquet. And, um, and previous to that, I would say we played competitive croquet, like professional competitive croquet, my husband and I, we did, we really did. And it's been a long time, so we ha we've kind of forgotten that. And so, you know, you think of croquet as this really sophisticated, kind, sweet little thing. Well, <coughs> not with us. <laughs> So we engaged in beginning croquet, and, and as we got going, my husband started to remember how to play. And, and we started to remember all the different ramifications of what happened if you hit them, and you can hit them out, and what happens with this, and how that works. And the truth is, my sweet, on the shyish, kind of quiet husband kind of came out of his shell and became the croquet king, we'll call it, okay? And so, and so, right, right, okay, yeah, okay. So, and so, but it was another clear example for me of what happens when we engage in these situations. Of course, you know, sending somebody out and, and whatever, all the different things, you could, you could make it a positive or negative story. But the truth is that it was about being engaged in the situation, about connecting with other people, and opening to being fully present and expressed. And it was so fun. It was so fun. It was fun to see him come out. It was fun for me to get engaged in that again. And I'm going to go get a croquet set this week. Last week it was a hula hoop. This week it's a croquet set. I'm really excited about this, you know. But the idea of playing. Are you finding those places in your life where you can, you can engage with someone and you can take that playful attitude? The other part of it is this. We take ourselves just a wee bit too seriously, you think? <laughs> just a wee bit too seriously. You know? And I don't know about you, but I take my spiritual work very seriously, you know? <laughs> my spiritual growth is extremely important, and maybe I take it a wee bit too seriously, you know? 
maybe my work is a little too serious. Maybe, my, you know, and so, and so the idea is if we can start to lighten up a little bit about ourselves, we can change anything. I have this amazing, I have this amazing inspirational young woman in our life right now. And she has been with us for about a year and she's this sweet, darling 19-year-old. And she's got a health challenge all of a sudden has come up. And, and it's been amazing to watch her. She, um, I, it's got one of those really long names that I can't even try and remember what it is. But, um, but what happens is when she has an episode, she loses control of the muscles of her face. So she loses control of her tongue. She loses control of her ch- uh, jaw and her cheeks and her, and her forehead. And she can't speak very well. And so she was with my daughter when one of these situations happened. And, and Emily came to me and said, you know, she can't talk. And, and then she came to me and said, you know, I'm, uh, this is what's going on. And, and she was explaining it to me. And of course, me in my, you know, in my um, religious science, absolute metaphysician, I'm healing you right now because I love you so much. There is no sin, sickness, or death. Anybody who was in my roots class knows that. Um, that that uh, she tells me, she said, and then she said, and Emily laughed at me when that happened. And of course, I am like a mama lion for kindness. Okay, no matter who it is, even if it's my own kid, I'm like, Emily, we're not going to laugh. We're not, you know, we need to be kind and sweet. And she said to me, no, 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 no. I want her to laugh because I'm laughing at it. She said, I have to laugh when this happens. And she said, and by the way, I sound hilarious when it happens. And so it's right that Emily's going to laugh at me because I'm laughing at me. And I just looked at her and was blown away by her courage and her consciousness at 19, to be able to look at something like that that she's facing in her life and to be able to laugh at it and know that there's something in that. Maybe she doesn't know exactly what that means, but we do, right? If you can laugh at something, you can change it, okay? So if you've got something going on in your life and and it's a challenge and it's frustrating, if you can imagine it out in front of you and start laughing at it, it'll change your relationship to it and then you can change it. Because when we take things so seriously, it digs us deep into the dark, deep energetic of the solid form, right? And we're not going to go into that because we know that that's changeable. We're going to go into the spirit. We're going to go high. We're going to go into the the essence of who we are and know that everything that, that is around us is changeable, is malleable. And there's joy in that. And so if you can laugh at yourself... If I can laugh at myself trying to hula hoop in the front of the church, you know what I mean? They, and I'll tell you, they were trying really hard to find me a hula hoop for this service. They were, they were searching the church to find me a hula hoop for this service. <laughs> and uh, and uh, they didn't. <sighs> Thank God for small favors. Um, that, that uh, you know, if you can, it, you know, it, then we can laugh at ourselves and allow ourselves, because when we're in play, we are in an altered state. Our brains relax, our hearts open. The, the guard that we have falls down, and we can fully engage with whoever we are with and, and in the experience that we're having. It's an altered state. It's a different way of being. And so there's all of these new studies that coming out about how we can play more at work and how we can play for meeting. Instead of meetings, do something that's playful. Do something that's interactive. And you get more creative. You get more done. And everybody's a lot happier doesn't sound like there's a lot of downside to that to me you know so if we can take that into our spiritual life I'm telling you we can heal anything we can heal anything because we are spirit having this experience the other thing is that happiness is actually a choice do you know that (laughs) happiness is a choice and joy and fun is a spiritual practice And so here we are, it's the perfect time at the end of the summer to remember that because we've got a little bit of time left. Well, of course, who am I kidding? We're in San Diego, we've got summer too, November. But before school starts again. And so the idea of of doing our spiritual practice as as joy. How can I do spiritual practice as joy and and choose to be happy? Choose to do things that, that reflect the joy of God in everything that I do. That there's happiness that we are expressing and experiencing. So that's what our spiritual practice is for this time of year. I've got a, um, 
Oh, and I've got a quote to share with you. One of my teachers, Reverend Alice Bandy, who I'm so, uh, has a new book out. Anybody see this? Oh, it's really great. The Wisdom of Money. I know our bookstore is going to have some. Um, but the, isn't it beautiful? It's really beautiful. I'm so happy to say that Reverend Alice was here uh, for years, one of our ministers, and she's going to come back and teach the consciousness of wealth this fall for us. So I'm excited about that. And she, um, I have found that just in my, in my spiritual growth, some of the best consciousness books are, are those that are about uh, money and, and wealth. And not necessarily because of that, but, but their concepts move through our whole entire life. And so she says, I wanted to share with the, this with you. She says, look from the inside. Each and every situation and person in your life is there to encourage you along the path of your own spirit. Ask the questions, how am I more joyful, more truthful, more loving, more creative because of this? How could I be more joyful because of this? What is my inner being expressing because I am having this experience? If we can change our relationship to the events of our life, if we can Shift it so that we're not at effect of them, but we are realizing that they're causing us to express more of who we are. We can shift out of any pain, discomfort, worry, fear, anything. Everything is malleable. Everything is Plato. I'm in an interesting time because um, I'm in between two classes. I'm just finishing up our roots class this summer, which is really powerful, and I'm getting ready to uh, move into our essential earnest class in the fall. It's going to start in the second week of September. And so I'm still finishing, uh, spending some time. I feel like, I feel like these um, w wise ones that we study, I spend time with when I read them. I just kind of permeate with their wisdom, you know, and so it feels like I'm sitting down on a couch next to them chatting with them. So I feel like I'm, I'm so right now I'm spending time with Emma Curtis Hopkins and Ernest Holmes, and so that's really a party, I'll tell you. It's, a real, it's really a good party. But Emma Curtis Hopkins has this, she does her denials, right? She does her denials, and her denial is that there is no matter. There's no matter. So everything that we see, right, there is no matter. And so everything is spirit. Everything we see and we touch and we know and we experience is spirit. Everything that happens in our life is spirit. And so that only means that it's there to express more God through us and as us and for us. And Ernest Holmes says, it doesn't matter what you do, it's just that you live and you live fully. Ernest Holmes wants us to live full out. I believe that we are here to be the fullest expression of who we've come here to be with nothing other than that. To be the channel of the crazy individual expression that we are. That's why we're here. And come on, let's face it, we are all beautiful, unique expressions of God. And so where we're limiting ourselves and we're holding back and we're judging ourselves for whatever that is, that's where we need to lighten up, let it go, and just be who we are. And so my hope for you, my assignment for you, my joy for you this week is to laugh a little bit more, play a little bit more, and it, you know, you can find me on words with friends, I'm, I'm, you know, pretty good at that, I like playing, um, uh, play a little bit more, and, and lighten up on who you are, take yourself a little bit easier, realize that this, in this last week of summer, right, before schools really kick in, that this is a time of joy, it's a time of playing, it's a time of celebration, and I'll tell you, if you do that, you'll watch your life transform. Right? You in? Everybody in? Great. All right. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. Thank you. All right. And I'm glad to call back Gia Chambuti. Wow. If I were the sun way up there, I'd glow with love most everywhere. I'll be the moon 
sun goes down Just to let you know that I'm still around That's how strong my love is, whoa That's how strong my love is now That's how strong my love is, darling That's how strong my love is I'll be the weeping willow drowning in my tears and you can go swimming when you hear and I'll be the rainbow after the tears are gone wrap you in my colors and keep you warm cause that's how strong my love is darling that's how strong my love is now that's how strong God's love is whoa that's how strong God's love is I'll be the ocean so deep and wide and catch all your happy tears whenever you cry now and I'll be the breeze when the storm is gone to dry your eyes Oh, yeah. That's how strong my love is, so deep and wide. That's how strong my love is now. Oh, that's how strong my love is. Oh, that's God's love for us. Oh, yeah. yeah. you want now 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 yes wide as the sky and high like the birds that fly my love for you any kind of love you want I will give it to you baby cause that's how strong yes that's how strong soul girl bring the soul oh amazing 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 she got soul I'll tell you she definitely does oh, oh. wow all right oh, all right now let's, let's get back together here all right so this is the time of our service we have the opportunity to share our gifts so I'm gonna call forth our invite forward our ushers to come on up and I will invite everyone to take their gifts and put them on their heart today. Let's infuse them with some love and some joy here and say thank you to all those who come together to support us and to thank this spiritual community for its generosity and its support for Seaside and its programs and its light. 
For I simply know that Seaside is the manifestation of this divine idea of freedom, of joy, of comfort, of support, of love, made manifest here as this spiritual community. And each of its ministries moves out into the world to touch, to transform, to, su to support, and to love. And so I know that this gift, this offering, is an opportunity to partake of the flow of the divine source and support, knowing that it simply moves out into the world to shine its light, to share this love that we infuse it with, to share this joy and this celebration for this experience that is the playground of God. And so with a grateful heart, I bless it and I give thanks for it and simply allow it to be, knowing it goes forth to prosper and expand. And so it is. So please join me in saying our um, uh, affirmation of giving. Spirit continues to bless my world. Gratefully I live as the giving expression of spirit, opening the floodgates of the affluent flow of greater good as my life now. And so it is. <laughs> friend Helen. I don't know what Helen did last night, actually. I do. <laughs> but it is with that sense of joy and play that we come together to bless this offering, knowing that it is spirit and expression as joy, as love, and as light. And I know that it goes to seed, to prosper, and to support this divine expression of God that is this spiritual community. And so how grateful I am to simply accept this, to bless it, to give thanks for it, and to celebrate this joy of being together in the spirit and in the life that we are living in. So with a grateful heart, I surrender it and allow it to be, and so it is. So it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Well, thanks for coming, everybody. How was that? Was that fun? What a great day together, huh? I've got a couple of announcements to make. Um, oh, thank yous. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend. First of all, I'd like to thank Reverend Tammy Mars, who cues me when I do things in different, in different, <laughs> in different orders. Reverend Tammy is the greatest support that one could ever want for it, at this center. I mean, she is such a loving, lovely woman to work with, and I am so grateful for her, and I just want to honor you and thank you so much. Not just for today, but for every day. <laughs> And for Gia Chamboti for being here with us today. We give it up for her. Please support her and buy her CDs. She's phenomenal. She's phenomenal. The, the soul that you bring forward is amazing. Isn't it amazing? And the guys in the band, thanks. <laughs> you guys rock today. Thanks for being here. And Rebecca Jade for stepping in for Reverend Fran. 
How great is that? So we've got Tim, and I just want to say hello to everybody on the podcast. Tim, thank you so much for videoing us and taking care of us here. The Marv and Ed giving us visuals and sound. Thank you. And I also want to mention Marv because I don't know if you realize we've had this beautiful Inside Seaside news, weekly newsletter for a year now. Isn't that cool? We've had it for a year and how wonderful it is. And so I just want to honor Trudy McGrath, our board president, and Marv and Elizabeth Burmeister for putting together the work that they do to put this together. I'll tell you, it's not easy. It's not easy to wrangle us all up in the office. It's not easy to put this all together. And they serve and support us every week. Thank you so much. Okay. I want to also mention that today's flowers were provided by Nancy Mills for her dear husband. Isn't this beautiful? Thank you, Bill, for filling my life with sunshine, laughter, and love. How sweet that is. So we love the expression of love here. And so, um, so next week... We have the Community Spiritual Leader of Centers for Spiritual Living coming. Dr. Ken Gordon is here, and I've worked with him while uh, in my time at the Holmes Institute, and he, I saw him recently at um, the Asilomar Conference. This man is phenomenal. He is the light of science of mind in the world right now. He's the spokesperson. That's His role is to be the presence out in the world, and he is phenomenal and wonderful, and I'm going to invite you to come and hear him next Sunday at, at 9 and 11. And um, let's see what else is going on. There's a lot going on, and you can see it in your inside seaside. Um, but what I would like to do right now is to pray. And so I'll invite any of our religious science practitioners in the room. Please stand. Let's just honor these amazing lights who hold us in light and in prayer every day. Whether you know it or not, you're being prayed for. And these are the people who are always available to you for prayer. If there's something going on in your life, one of those things that you can't push out enough to laugh at, these are the people, who, they won't laugh at you. But they'll pray with you. <laughs> But they'll pray with you and know the truth for you and support you. And so I invite you after every service to go see one, have a prayer. Look for them in their stoles or, or in the um, prayer patio after. And so let's come together in consciousness here. Simply moving together in this feeling, in this joy of seaside on this day. Breathing into the light and the love of God that is ever present that is ever alive and activated, revealing itself in every moment, in every thought, in every word, in every experience, simply God in action. And that is the truth of who we are. We are simply the divine life being lived. We are spirit's playground, revealing our individual gift unto the world. And as we open to all of the potentiality and possibilities of our life, it, ex it, it is created in freedom and in joy, easily and effortlessly bringing forth experiences of harmony and of peace, of abundance and of joy. There is nothing that cannot be shifted. There is nothing that is stagnant. There is only the opportunity for spirit's movement and spirit's expression. And so I bless this truth in this day and know for anyone who is seeking that they have all that they seek right there where they are, that anyone who is experiencing anything less than wholeness has that health and vibrance and fullness right where they are. I know that God reveals itself in support and in guidance and possibility in every moment, in every situation, in that lightness, in that joy, and in that exuberance for living. And so I call forth this perfection and this freedom. I celebrate it. I honor it. And I simply bear witness to the amazing gift of it moving forth in this week for each person here. And so with a grateful heart, I simply surrender my word knowing all is well, for God is here. And so it is. Amen. There was a time in my life I thought I had to do it all for myself I didn't know the grace of God was sufficient I didn't know the love of God was at hand No Now I can say If you are discouraged Struggling just to make it through another day. 
Together, I playfully engage with my life. One more time. I playfully engage with my life. And now the song of grace. I'm living in love, living in peace. I'm living my life. For what I believe, through joys and through fears, in this world I walk. God's grace shines on me, and it shines on us all. We are living in grace. We are living in grace. We are living in grace. We're living in love, we're living in peace, united we stand as one family, we honor our truth as together we walk. God's grace moves through me and it moves through us all, we are living in grace.
Thank you.